What can influence your performance in the air traffic control world? The complex world of human behavior goes beyond emotional intelligence and psychological state. But for us, working in ATC, it's all categorized and written down just to make your life safer and our work easier. Human behavior is the range of actions and mannerisms exhibited by individuals. It can be influenced by many things, genetics, environment, culture, and personal experiences. Despite our unique traits, humans share commonalities that can be predictable and studied. Thank God, or else we would live in a much more chaotic world. In ATC, controllers must work together seamlessly despite different cultures, backgrounds, and personalities. Key commonalities include the need for clear communication and a shared understanding of rules, regulations, and protocols, and of course, the importance of safety. However, besides human limitations like errors, some scenarios may cause unwanted states in air traffic control. Here are the three most common cases where our minds become our biggest enemies. First up, complacency. What is that actually? It can be defined as something like quiet self-satisfaction, feeling pleased, or even smugness. Feeling confident and self-satisfied is not a bad thing automatically, but it may come with unawareness of a potential danger or something not being right. Complacency in air traffic control often stems from routine and familiarity. It's easy to let your guard down when you've been doing the same tasks day in and day out without any issues. This false sense of security can lead to reduced vigilance and missed details. Think of it like driving the same route to work every day. After a while, you might not notice if the traffic lights change or if there's a new construction site. Complacency can have severe associated effects. In ATC, it may mean overlooking a critical piece of information or failing to respond promptly to a developing non-routine situation. Second, we have overconfidence. Overconfidence is a dark personality trait that refers to an individual's tendency to overestimate their own abilities and is made up of two primary components the better than average effect and the miscalibration effect. The better than average effect leads overconfident individuals to believe that their skills and abilities are greater than those of the average person, while the miscalibration effect leads individuals to unjustifiable degrees of certainty about a prediction given the state of the environment around them. When controllers successfully manage complex scenarios, they might believe they can handle anything that comes their way. They are unbeatable, they are gods, and never make any errors. This overconfidence can become badly misleading, and it can cause some incidents when you are not aware of normal human limitations, although normal confidence is healthy, and a basic requirement to do our work. Going over reasonable boundaries can lead to risky behavior and poor decision making. Overconfident controllers might underestimate the complexity of a situation or dismiss potential risks. The effects? They are just as dangerous as complacency, inadequate preparation, insufficient communication with team members, and ultimately, errors that could have been avoided. The third enemy, our final boss, boredom. Boredom is brought on by a combination of factors. It can be a lack of stimulation so that we find our work uninteresting and unengaging. Or perhaps people don't have enough work to do. Too much leisure time can also bring on boredom. It's also compounded by a mismatch between expectations and reality. One of the top health issues at work is burnout a form of exhaustion caused by constantly feeling overworked. Recently, exactly the opposite is just as serious an issue as well. Bore out at work is chronic boredom and studies have shown it can cause depression, anxiety, stress, insomnia, and higher turnover. Boredom is an emotional state characterized by feeling unstimulated, unfocused, and restless, yet lacking the desire to engage, or in short, boredom exists when we are mentally idle. Boredom in air traffic control might sound surprising given the thousands of lives in high-stakes environments, but it's a real issue, especially during periods of low traffic. When controllers aren't actively engaged, their attention can wander and their alertness can drop. This lack of stimulation can make it harder to switch back into high gear when things get busy again. The consequences include increased reaction times, missed communications, and a general decline in performance. It's like being on a long road trip and starting to zone out. You're not as sharp as you need to be. Professional conduct in the air traffic control workspace is about maintaining high behavior, communication, and decision-making standards. It means adhering to rules and regulations, respecting colleagues, and consistently performing your duties with integrity. For controllers, this means clear and precise communication, staying alert and being prepared to handle any situation. It's not just about what you do, but mostly how you do it. Maintaining professionalism, even under high workloads and stress, is key. 
So what do we do to maintain a positive safety culture? First, we strictly follow established procedures to ensure safety protocols are consistently applied, reducing the risk of errors. We proactively report incidents and near misses so our entire team learns and improves. It's all about teamwork, effective communication, and collaboration among controllers, pilots, and ground staff. Everyone knows their role and supports each other in maintaining high standards. To maintain responsible behavior, we need specific factors in our lives. They might seem essential for some, but for us, they are vital. Comprehensive training programs ensure that controllers have the knowledge and skills needed to perform their duties effectively. Ongoing education keeps them updated on new procedures and technologies. Besides the rating training each controller has to go through to be validated in any ATC unit, there are yearly continuation training courses about various subjects. Just like pilots, we go through different emergencies, practice phraseology in these situations, and refresh ourselves with all the essential knowledge in our work. The flying crew goes through CRM, crew resource management, as one of their main subjects. We have stress and fatigue management courses and TRM, team resource management, which is basically the same as CRM, but only in our environment. Next, a supportive and well-structured work environment encourages responsible behavior. We need proper rest breaks to sip coffee and have a manageable workload. This is all part of a fatigue management plan. All air navigation service providers have to have a procedure on how to manage and mitigate errors caused by fatigue. This includes things like maximum consecutive working days, maximum hours per duty period, maximum time providing air traffic control service without breaks, minimum rest periods, and maximum consecutive night shifts. Both mistakes and accomplishments must be acknowledged. Controllers must take personal responsibility for their actions. This involves self-awareness, recognizing when they're unfit for duty due to fatigue or stress, and taking the necessary steps to reduce these issues. A no-blame culture has to be in place, encouraging everyone to report openly when something has gone wrong. The key idea is that honest errors are not to be punished, but violations and negligence are not tolerated. Effective leadership promotes a culture of accountability and continuous improvement. Leaders who lead by example and support their teams contribute significantly to fostering responsible behavior. To learn more about teamwork in ATC, check out this video. See you there.